will be uh, doing this solid head turn we have been doing uh, in part one. If you have not watched those lectures, it is highly uh, suggested that you do so. We learned how to build this construction head in parts one and two. We learned how to rotate the head in a construction form to maintain the solidity. In part three and four, we added a facial features onto that construction to get this effect. Now in the final part, we are going to be uh, placing a hair design on top. As you see, the hair covers a lot of the back. So there's a lot of information there that is not, uh, that you have gained uh, on drawing a head that can be applied to your own designs throughout this lecture. But it's probably a good idea that you follow along as uh, pausing the video step by step with the uh, model that I am using. Now, uh, let us do a little bit of talk before we begin with the lecture because it's important. Many of you might have seen model sheets, okay? Many of you might have seen model sheets where you see a front view of a character, hair like this, okay? I'm not going to spend any time. You see a side view, okay? And then you see a three-quarter view, so we'll just do um, something like that, okay, to make it clear, okay? And then you see all these little lines going across here and all that. Um, these model sheets can be quite misleading, okay? Uh, because they work on two different ways, two different levels, okay? One, the character has to work for animation, okay? So the character has to be able to be turned around like this, okay? And people who build, try to build these sort of hybrid rigs in Toon Boom now have to be able to do this in order to do that well, okay? And uh, animators, assistants, in-betweeners, all those kind of thing are going to have to be able to understand how to control and in-between and manipulate shapes to be able to do this kind of thing. So on the one side, to do a good turnaround, to just draw your front, okay, your side and your back ignorantly, if you don't understand how to animate, is, you know, goo goo gaga, let's play pretend I'm, I'm being an animator today, okay? There's nothing wrong with that, but if you want to be a real animator and you're in these archives, I doubt that that's what you want to do, right? So, you know, there's plenty of people online making their own model sheets and trying to play let's pretend, but I doubt that's you. OK, so now um, another thing to understand is, is I might do a turnaround like this and I'm going to teach you how to do a turnaround like this. But this is not really something that we would do for a model sheet. OK, because it is nice as though it is beautiful and controlled as though it is. And a lot of beginners will be looking going, oh, I wish that's uh, I wish I had that skill and whatever. This is kind of robotic. It's kind of limiting. OK, so you need to understand that this is a skill that you need to have. You really need to possess this skill. This skill is one of the r the f skills that will make you a badass with the, you know, what was that Queen's Reich song? Take hold of the flame, take hold, you know, where you've got the flame. So you're a bad boy. But then once you have these skills, OK, you're going to throw them right in the dustbin. OK, because. Um, if you want to do high quality, high grade Disney animation, we do not want to be, we want to have the skill to be able to transition our shapes and control our shapes like this, but we do not want to be this kind of this. Otherwise, you know, why not just build a CG model? You know, why not use one of those hack Toon Boom hybrid rigs, which look kind of shit, you know? So we don't want to use this as this is our definite model. So I have to make that very clear to you. So you understand that this is not either the only way to do a model sheet, okay? This is teaching you how to be a badass in-betweener, cleanup artist, uh, somebody who can really control your drawing, okay? This is um, the law of solid drawing, okay? That's what we're doing. So yes, it's important to construct your character. It's important to know, but for example, you can go online, I wonder how many of you have done this. You know, it's so funny. 
um, with the internet today, but people claiming they're interested in. And you can look at Glenn Keane's notes on Ariel, okay? And you can talk about how he squares the head like this and how, you know, there's a little third down hair like this and how this, this shape on top of the head comes hair like that, you know. And you you can go and look at those those little notes and you can look at how the side view suddenly changes. Okay, so the hair the hair of the side view changes and then the side of the mouth, the nose kind of comes out like this. Okay, so there ain't no way that this is this. Okay, this is not going to animate like this. So there ain't no way that that's going to definitely animate like this. Okay, which is why when you look at, you know, you look at characters like Rapunzel and all that, they're very different to this kind of traditional Disney drawing. So these these characters push it. They go to appeal. They go to pure shape design shapes appealing drawing shapes but the know-how of being able to do this so you can draw and animate those characters doing anything you want is is still very much applied within the uh, uh, traditional animation so designing a character isn't an either or thing it isn't just naively making a model sheet of your character okay with a front side back and go that's my model and it's just made out of these shapes and all this or, you know, that's one extreme. It's not that. And it's not doing a completely robotic, overly, like, completely, uh, however nice, I don't want to cut this down because this is great work. I love it. But however nice this is, this is kind of deadpan. You know, we don't want to limit our character design to these, just these static shapes for the profile, the front, the side. You know, this, so you need to understand why we are doing this lecture. We are doing this lecture to teach you control to teach you construction, to teach you consistency, to teach you one more time the law of solid drawing. Okay, so I don't want any confusion to be made about that because as we are in the advanced archives of the Real Animator Training Library, we need to understand what goes in to creating a character and why uh, those kind of things. So while I make this drawing again, I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this to explain to you again and show you exactly how that skull thing fits on there. OK, so just very quickly, this hair represents the frontal bone. OK, with our eye sockets. OK, then we have hair. OK, so this represents that frontal bone. This represents our nasal bones. OK, coming along here like that. OK, and I'm just going to leave that empty. So I'm just going to color that in for now. We'll talk about the nose later. Now, this hair represents our zygomatic bones. Notice how they are kind of all lining up. OK, so this hair represents our zygomatic bones. OK. And this kind of fuses all together to make our maxilla, kind of like a flat kind of maxilla like that. OK. And then we can have the bottom eye piece there like that. So you can see where, where where we're going with this. Now, the temple arch, okay? And this is where the ear comes in. And this piece around here represents our um, temple bone. Okay, we got to go through this process a few times so you can get it. Because if we don't, you know, um, you're not going to get it. Okay? Then these two around here represent our parietal bones. Okay? We can talk about the brow, okay, which comes along the top like that. Then this represents the um, mental portion of our mandible. And this represents our angle of the mandible, the jawbone, which comes. Notice, see, this is straight line like this. Notice I'm not drawing with any ruled straight lines, okay? As I did this piece of animation, I did not work out any axis or anything. I did it exactly the way I'm showing it to you. So I'm showing you how you can be quite precise and quite organic at the same time. OK, let's go to the construction one so you can see. OK, this exactly this way. I did not use any straight guidelines. I just used my hand eye coordination. So I see the back of this, this back of this head hair and the back of this head hair. And I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to use that to make my sphere shape. So around there, I'm going to think about my middle sphere shape. So I've used the back back portion of this side and I've used the back portion of this side. Okay. 
to make either side of this front one in the middle. Okay, now I have this line here of this, which I can see of the mouth sections there, so I kind of know where to kind of end my sphere like that, okay? And I'm going to draw that kind of mouth line going between the two there like that, which is going to kind of guide me there anyway. So we, we, you should have something like this at the moment, okay? When you work between the three of them, you should essentially have something like that, right? So now, okay, the next process, okay, I'm going to turn off that light box for a minute. What you need to then say is, okay, well, I need to find my center. So you find your center and you can turn on your light box if you want, okay? And for the chin, if you want, you can make a straight line like that to save time. And then you can say, okay, well, yeah, I'm going to create that division. And why not, heck, if the neck is in the middle, why not let's just continue that complete division line down like that, okay? So you should essentially have a, a round sphere like shape in the middle with those two lines there kind of helping uh, you sort that out okay so now what I'm gonna think about is then I'm gonna think about the eye line okay so again I'm going to put on my light box and I'm going to rough in the line which is kind of measuring the eyes all together now to stop it from being deadpan flat okay as I said I, I, I eyeballed it and I like to you know I like to put a little curl in the in the line like that so it's not 100% straight, okay? Because, you know, the eyes sort of go in perspective around the head like that. So I put a little curl around there, but don't overdo it because you're going to end up, this is difficult, you're going to have jiggly eyes going around up and down like that, which is, you know, as I said, this is a, when, when we start building these eye shapes on here, it's okay to look at it like this and go, yeah, that's working, that's really cool. But the real test is, is when we start putting the, character on top and we start trying to maintain the volume of the eyes and the eyelashes and all that so you got to make sure the one thing that you do not want to get wrong is your eye line okay you want your eye line to be as good as it can be so you know i've curled it a little bit but if you feel safer just making it straight make it straight okay make it straight so now i immediately know as i flick i don't need to go from this to this to this because this and this I know is the same shape. And I've kind of worked out all my middles. So what I'm going to do is, as I immediately know, is okay. Well, the best way is this middle eye where I've figured out this, um, this, uh, this, if I do that in the middle, then I'm going to know, okay, well, that's kind of the size of one of his eye, her eyes. So I'm going to be able to figure out the other two eyes like that. Okay. Because we know that this three eye formula is how we keep consistency in the eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be as ex explanatory as I was in the previous one because I think it's kind of self-explanatory. Now we've got all the basic information down. So this middle eye, I'm going to come here, round, and I'm going to keep flipping like that. Now notice how this eye is growing in shape. Well, I'm using this eye as my reference. Okay, because we want them to kind of be same. Okay like that and then I've got this middle eye and that leads me onto this this thing remember how I said about how um, you know you might have read this formula somewhere where they said a good way to try and get facial structure is to look for a T I always think of those X-Men characters where you have the eyes in there like that and the nose and the mouth and the cheekbones you know um, coming in there like that you know that kind of little kind of so so this kind of T junction uh, some people like to work on that formula as a, so the thing about that okay is it, you can result in flat drawings that way okay so just be mindful so now but but what that does that middle eye does is that gives me the opportunities to, to very easily find okay without without too much uh, light box or construction it gives me the very um, or flipping rather rather this is too much construction okay <laughs> it gives me the opportunity to see that okay that change uh, taking place like that in the face right so then what that then enables me to do is to then think okay well let's go along the side now what I will do is, is I will go along here and if you want you can draw a line along the top along where the tops of these portions are like that okay and that will help you find your um, find your shape like this right so that'll help you find this shape like that okay so you have something like that and then what we're going to do is we're going to then say well okay 
Remember how we kind of like drew straight lines off the side? We're going to draw straight lines of the side. Now here's where we get a little bit kind of like, well, this is a little bit tricky, isn't it? Because if the head is kind of bulbous, okay, around about here, we have to think about this flat temple bone. See how this line is here? I'm going to color that in. We have to think about this, about how this flat thing here, okay, let's just contour it so you can kind of understand that. We have to think about how that flat thing there is going to translate because it can't stay around like that. That's round and bulbous. And we also want to know about the ears. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to think about my brows, okay? So if I look at this shape here, okay, and I think about carrying that shape off to the side, so I put on my light box and I see that it's all in line with this, okay? It's all in line with this, okay? So I think, well, that's in line with that, that's in line with that. So I can't really go too, too much further than that. I can't go out there like that, okay? So I'm going to have to come right like this and have these kind of little kind of houses on top <laughs> on top like it's like here's the house you know <laughs> here's the roof you know <laughs> kind of you know whatever you know so <clears throat> that's what I'm gonna kind of think and then I think well okay well then if that's the case then we got to kind of come straight down here like this and we got to kind of come straight down here like this but then we need to think about how that cheekbone comes in you see this kind of little portion here like this? So you've got to think about how that's going to look from the front, okay? So I'm going to do something like that, and I'm going to do something like that. And it all goes on to the eye line. Here it comes a little bit above the eye line, okay? If you want if you want to make it safe, as I'm explaining it to you, my character design is my character design. But if you want to make it, play it safe, you can bring it right down to the eye line, if you're finding it, this a little bit intimidating. Okay, so you can rest it on the eye line if you want to play that safe like that. So now I've immediately got this and I've immediately got this, okay? And then this, okay, this comes along the side of this line here like this. So I say, aha, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do something like that and I'm going to do something like that. So that's giving me a nice kind of side portion. Now you see how I've got all this bulbous shape here. Well, this bulbous shape is going to help me, okay, because it's going to help me figure out what to do with my ear, okay? So now remember how I made this kind of three-dimensional just by putting a division line there like that. I made this kind of three-dimensional thing. Well, that's going to kind of say, well, okay, well, that's pretty good. Because if I turn on the light box and I go to the top of the ear lines like this and to the bottom of the ears, you see, I can be loose. I don't need a ruler or anything. And I can say, well, I'll use that to kind of figure out where my ears are going to be like that. You see, so my ears are going to sit on the side there like that so then you got to kind of think to yourself well okay if the ear is on the side there like that you got to imagine how flat this thing is going to be you got to use your creative imagination so i'm going to say i'm going to bring it in okay i'm going to bring it in like that so now i'm going to remove this guideline here like this i'm going to remove this one there like that so now you can see how we're getting this because a skull, remember, many skulls, okay, are kind of long, longer on the side and flatter on the front, okay? So we, w we want to kind of have that effect in our work as we're doing this thing. First two lectures, parts one and part two, you learned how to create a construction of a humanoid face. Um... In parts two and part three, you learned how to add facial features and manipulate them around that construction. And in the final part, part five, uh, you learned how to design the theory behind hair design and you learned how to design and keep solid the hair on the character. Um, the character is, of course, the solid, com complete, clean turnaround. This has got additional in-betweens. Uh, so again, the in-between process of this was again just halved again and again. So the face was halved and the body was halved and the hair was halved. Uh, so it was all just, you can half it.
to your heart's content. So you can see that it's working in full color here. You can see that when it's colored in, it's completely solid, solid blocks of color. That's how you really test if your thing is solid. Um, blocks of color moving, no weird shape changing, no sudden squiggles, no jerks. That's what you want. Uh, sometimes those things can be missed in line. Um, so there you go. That is uh, the art of solid drawing, uh, real animator training, the law of solid drawing, rather. Um, uh, it's been a pleasure giving you this lecture. Let's just leave the logo. Just let that logo sink in. That's what real animator training is all about. It's about bringing the best out of the animator within you. It's been my pleasure to bring the best out of the animator in you, to guide you, to show you how you can uh, bring yourself to the level, elite level of the hand-drawn masters of yesteryear uh, and therefore become the hand-drawn masters of tomorrow, which this world desperately needs. Uh, thank you for joining me in this lecture. Um, you have no doubt... If you most of you are real animator training library members in the audience watching but some of you might not be some of you might be thinking um, my gosh that guy spent an hour and 50 minutes uh, talking about uh, uh, a character's hairstyle um, um, how to draw and turn around a character's hairstyle I've never been instructed like that before Welcome to Real Animator Training. Real Animator Training is the best learning resource for animation um, on the internet or even in, in, even in practical senses. Uh, it is the place where um, college graduates, industry professionals, um, uh, indie artists all uh, gather and learn uh, from me. It's not just some kind of little coursey course on the internet you see it is extremely thorough this is ambanimation.com go to ambanimation.com um, and click on real animator training here you can click to join or you can indeed upgrade your membership if you are a member here you will be treated to a video explaining to you no doubt if you've watched this lecture you know how in depth my training is i literally give you the what when where why and how of everything you are literally like standing over my shoulder as i explain to you everything that goes on in my head as i animate uh it is the most unique powerful way of learning uh, you have you basically can read all this information watch these videos ex disclosing to you what's in the different archives we have a basics archive we have an intermediate archive these are all hardcore courses for you to follow in a similar way that you've seen me doing on this one we've had five videos on this turnaround you can see the first two videos was on this the next two videos was on this and the fifth video was on the hair uh, that's what it's like even with bouncing balls. We have four videos for one walk cycle. We have a total of six walk cycles in the basics archive. So a total of 24 videos on walk cycles. Um, uh, three videos on uh, one pendulum exercise, though there are so many pendulum exercises in here. So you can watch this. Uh, same with the intermediate. You learn about introducing character animation. Uh, with a flower sack, quadrupeds, things like that. With the anatomy archive, you learn all about the human skeleton. The bones are what makes the person move. Uh, the muscles are good too, but the bones is where it's all at. For an animator, you need to know the articulation of joints. Uh, and then once you can make a shape move on that articulation, you're good to go, really. Which is why a lot of cutout people get away with the shit they do today. Um, you have the advanced archive which is where this lecture is going in a lot of the uh, lectures in the advanced archive are demos as opposed to courses but now i am starting to put some courses in the advanced archive then you have three uh three other archives two of them are bonus archives and one of them is a lecture archive of random lectures that don't really belong in any of these they could be like all round lectures you could be like a beginner and still get something out of them um, but you could also get a lot out of them if you're an advanced or an intermediate 
the Ask the Animator archive is the, uh, you get 46 episodes of Ask AMB, those uh, quick fire Q&As. Before this all began real animator training, it was a combination of my live stream library, which was just my live stream kind of feeling my way intuitive lectures. Um, and the Ask AMBs. Then we started making these hardcore courses that really turned people's lives around, basically. Um, and it became real animator training. But you, those videos are not thrown away and cast aside. You get them as bonus lectures because there's a lot of fun uh, and a lot of value in them still, even to this day. Um, so you can also uh, you can also read for the kind of shitheads that don't belong in here. So um, you know, I'm not kidding. That's true. Uh, so you can read if this place is for you. If you're not, you don't have to be a shithead. It just might not be for you. Um, and then there is a, um, you can listen to the testimonials of the uh, people who are already turning their lives around. And if you don't believe that they're turning their lives around, all you have to do is just click the word join now. And uh, you get to fill out this form to uh, apply uh, for one of the three different membership tiers. All of these membership tiers basically are the, uh, you know, are at great value. You're getting basically, as I said, industry professionals, college graduates uh, from the most established courses are signing up to this place. Um, uh, and you get it all for the price of a mid-range laptop. It doesn't go any higher than a mid-range laptop or an Xbox with a few games. Uh, and if you watch this video, you can even see that the kind of people you can see the kind of growth happening in my free Facebook group from library members and the caliber of people. You can see I'm giving feedback to a former Disney animator in uh, in this lecture here. Um, so if you need further convincing, those of you, some of you who are who are just, you know, got, not got any kind of sense of priority, not any, any any understanding of value will just say, I don't want to be part of it. That's fine. Fuck off. At the end of the day, um, there are people who will understand when you watch this video again and you just need a little bit of a nudge. Look, if you really want to turn your life around, look, we've got guys from Disney that are learning from this place. OK, so that's how powerful this training is. OK, so fill out this form, do the right thing, uh, turn your life around, become a real animator. That's what this place is all about. Thank you very much. It has been an absolute pleasure um, explaining just how great my course is. So, um... AMB is the greatest archive anyone could ever ask for. You know, of all the books I've read, of all the other online tutorials I've seen, this was the missing key. Every video is like packed with this information that I would never be able to get anywhere else. So I would say this, this is the greatest resource for learning animation. For me, AMB Animation Library is hands down the best animation learning resource that I've seen. I've tried all the tutorials, I've gotten all the books, I've never been able to um, really grow until I found AMB. And it's incredible. I've only just begun it, but like I definitely am getting more from that than I did from my one and a half years of college. I've noticed definitely that my animation has improved a lot and it's more alive than ever. And what I also like about this animation training is that you also gain real confidence. Real Animator Training Library is unequivocally the best resource uh, for animation, 2D animation, traditional hand-drawn animation that I've seen. So I wholeheartedly recommend the AMB Real Animator Training Library to anybody who wants actual knowledge and actual applicable concepts uh, to create their own animation and to move forward in the field of animation and to set your work above those uh, that are just kind of teaching themselves and not learning these true, tried and true classic concepts. AMB is motivated by his students' successes and improvements. He's a great teacher, a great animator with over 20 years experience in the industry so you can't really get much better than that. I strongly recommend him to anybody. I'm thinking on how to put in words what I feel about it. I love that. It approached me from my dream of becoming an animator. Every cent I paid in there was worth it. I like that the library is structured. I can go back and watch it anytime I want to. And um, he's just got so much knowledge. 
and uh, I just highly recommend it to anyone who's out there looking to learn traditional 2D animation. And so thank you, MB, so much, and uh, thank you so much for like all you've done for me. <laughs> so, are you gonna join the library?